being robbed if you don't enjoy your life and enjoy your retirement. If you continue to sit there and work and say, I need another year, I need another year, you're being robbed. I, uh, man, I, this is gonna, this, this kills me. Nathan, I just did a video on Nathan doing a pension. Sorry about my unshaven, unkemptness. Uh, today's putting away Christmas trees and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, it's been a busy day of uh, manual labor for my better half. And she does her own manual labor too, by the way. So, anyway, Nathan had written in saying he's a military retiree. He's a, a recent widow. Does it make sense to do Roth conversions? And I, uh, you know, I did a, a short video on that. And then, um, you know, he, he wrote in the comments that he's a, a recent widow. Nine kids out of the house. They raised them all. And uh, they were getting, planning on enjoying their golden years. And then he said, you know, best laid plans. Um, I, I tell you, I, you know, I'm reading this book by John Walt Waters. Uh, I've, I'll tell my head, I can't remember what it's called. I'll put a link in the show notes. Ah, I can't believe I can't remember. It. It's just, it's, it's incredible. Uh, the book is just, has touched me to my soul. Uh, like I can't, I, I've, I, I, very few books have. I, even maybe more so than the screw, and eh, probably not the screw tape letters. That's not the good example, but very few books have touched into the soul as this one by John Waters uh, because he talks about happiness and how we're never, ever going to achieve it in this world. Um, and it, Not happiness, but he talks about happiness, but uh, fulfillment. We're always looking for fulfillment. And uh, he was making a point. He said, so he lives in some place right outside Dublin. He's looking out his window and he overlooked he a small cottage he bought like 1990 or something like that before the Celtic Tiger movement came around. Uh, so anyway, he was telling, he's looking out the window, he can look over the bay, whatever the bay is out there that, you know, from the English channel, I don't know, but I, I've never been there, you know, but whatever. And, uh, and he was saying, he's just one time, every now and again, he'll see where just the clouds come in and there's just this, just brightness of the sun poking through. He goes, it's just, it's so brilliant. It's like, uh, it just, it's a, it's an anecdote or a metaphor maybe of the life as we, hit, as we are. We know the beauty is there. We can see it, but just like that, it's gone. And we want it to stay in eternity. And it does. It's just not in this world. It's kind of, I, and I'm, I'm butchering what he said, but it was so, man, I tell you, it's like when I was growing up as a kid in Maine, I remember just like, I tell you, taking my dog. I, I've always been an early morning, early riser. And in Maine, the, um, the sun comes up early and it, the, and it goes down early. So five o'clock in the morning, the sun's up, you know, three 30 is starting to get dark, which is kind of creepy. But for me living on an Island, there was nothing better, nothing better than taking my dog. His name was doggy <laughs> doggy. And I had hop on my bike and, uh, drive and, and ride down to the, the water. It was, I, I, I can never, the back shore Maine, just sitting there on the, you know, the, the rocks, just look it was, it was the most satisfying moments of my life, even to this day. Uh, and I don't mean that disparagingly about my kids or anything like that, but just the level of peace, serenity, and just the mystery of it all. It was, it was so, it was incredible. I just, I didn't need it. And that's why I just, I wrote a comment today on my uh, community section of uh, Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, where I said, happiness is, you know, early, uh, reading, right, waking up early, good book with this guy in my lap. Say hi, and uh, and drinking a cup of coffee. I mean, for me, that's happiness, right there. Sit on my lap, drinking a cup of coffee, early morning with a good book. And I said, I don't need. I mean, literally, I don't need a a, a bigger house, a bigger car, nicer clothes. Um, they're not gonna make. They're not gonna change that moment in my life at all. Um, maybe if I had the smell of the ocean, which which John Waters says is he needs it. And it's funny. He said he wasn't he wasn't grown up around the ocean, even though I think he said his dad was from Galway. Was on the other side of the country, right on the water, uh, but I know what he need. I know what he means. It's like he's talking to me, John Waters, when he writes this. It's like me, fifteen years from now, if I were in Ireland. It, it, he writes just the way I feel. It's nuts, and uh, he says he needs the ocean. It gives him, um, I don't know, whatever the word is, strength, something like that. And uh, I know, I know the feeling, man. I know it uh, big time. And, I, and the reason I know is I, I did grow up around the ocean, and just the the ocean, the mystery of it all. You know, it made me think actually. 
You know, you've never seen, this is going to sound crazy, but it just kind of goes back to the almighty, the intelligent design, the creator, uh, the trinity for Christians, all that. But uh, people say, ah, you never, you can't prove God exists. And, and I always kind of chuckle that because I know I get that. And I always say, well, prove whatever you think exists and it can't. So it's, it's always one of those things. It's all about faith. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, but, you know, you can't prove electrons. You can't prove them by your visual. You can't see them. You, you can't. No one's ever seen an electron. Um, I did. A, there, there are some uh, some pictures with maze massive uh, microscopes that theoretically show electrons, uh, but they don't show, certainly don't show them in action. They don't show them moving around and, and generating electricity. And it's just it, the mystery of our world is the from the smallest atom particle of an atom to electrons, which create that light right there, which create what we're using here. Uh, to the the stars, it's just it's such a, a mysterious, incredible. It's just an awe inspiring world. It's so awe inspiring. I mean, the fact that you have never seen an electron, but yet we rely on electrons for our modern life. It's it's in incredible, and you can't prove electrons exist at least with the naked eye. And certainly, don't tell me you can prove electrons exist by turning on the light bulb or turning on the light switch. That doesn't prove electrons exist, because many time I turn on the light switch and it doesn't turn on. Uh, that doesn't disprove electrons exist. It just means there's a, an open circuit someplace. I don't know what it is, but it, we haven't closed the circuit. That's the circuit. That's why the light doesn't turn on. But just think for, you know, up until about two, what, how electricity was invented, what, 200 years or something like that. There you go. Less than that. I mean, it's just the awe-inspiring of the world, of just nature, of humanity, from the, the tiniest to the biggest. It's incredible. It's incredible. The awe-inspiring for me just growing up and looking out of the ocean, on the Atlantic Ocean, knowing on the other side there are people in England well into their work day and just wondering if there's some guy sitting on the other side, maybe my future wife sitting on the other side of that ocean saying, I wonder if there's someone over there and not has no clue about Peace Island, no clue what I was going through, I had no clue what they are going through. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's inspiring. And it's, uh, it's one of those things I think some people say it just makes you feel so irrelevant. I don't think so. I just think it makes you realize how insane everything is around you in a, such a wonderful way and how just how you cannot be taken back by awe. It just take the time to get out of your day to day just fast. It's just, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. One more year, one more. Th just stop and literally smell the roses. You know, I planted some rose bushes. And they, you know, I got yellow, red, I can't remember what the other one was. And they just, I just, you know, you know, I love taking him out back to go pee and smelling the roses. It's like, oh, and we got these tea berry trees, which I, I planted tons of stuff. And, you know, most of it grows real well. It's just the smell of a tea berry. Is it tea berry? I think it's tea berry. Um, oh, my goodness. They just smell so, it's, it's insane. And I know it sounds, oh, it makes you romantic. No, nah, it's not being a romantic. It's just to think about my man, Nathan, and I don't know, like, I, I don't know. I've just, I've heard this story and stories like this a million times. You know, we planned, we planned, and then kaboom, if the plan doesn't happen. And, uh, and John Waters, those whole book is based on this lady who's a writer in, I in Ireland, and uh, and she died early, and she was very upset. She goes, I, I got not literally nothing. I will literally leave it. And she was an atheist, or at least I think she was, and just, you know, the terror, the terror of her existence is now extinguished. That's what she was saying. I'm extinguished. And, you know, maybe it's a crutch for us who believe in a, in a other, uh, something else out there. But you know, the beauty around us, it can't be overlooked by having to go in that crappy old job and sitting and commute and saying, I'm, later on down the road, later on down the road, we'll make things work. We're going to enjoy when you have the enjoyment right there. It'll never be for eternity. It'll never be, you'll, all, you'll never get it here. That's what I've, I've come to the conclusion. You can search, you can strive, you can search. You will never get uh, complete happiness and contentment and as a human being on this earth. You won't. It's, uh, it's outer body. It's supernatural. It's in the next. And, uh, and I, I feel bad for those people who's atheists. And look, they don't want my sympathy because they, you know, they claim that they don't care. I just, I don't, I don't buy that for two seconds. But either way, that's, that's their choice. You know, C.S. Lewis, I said this a million times, he says about God, God doesn't banish you, you banish God, essentially. You know, you say, God, on earth we say, God, thy will be done. And then when you get to uh, to meet your creator, 
Um, you know, God says, are you, you ready to go? And you say, nope, I don't believe in you. I don't want you. I, whatever it is. And God says, okay, thy, thy will be done. And, uh, and you banish yourself. He doesn't banish you. He loves you. And he says, I'm, I'll take you open arms. And you say, nah, don't need it. And uh, I think that's pretty actually accurate, probably what happens. That, you know, God says, okay, that's fine. Um, thy will be done. And I just feel bad for those atheists who just literally believe their, their whole being is extinguished to nothingness, to nothing more, because they have no proof of that any more than you and I have a proof of a, a divine intervention or a supernatural being or a, 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 a second life, so to speak. But I just think the John Waters stuff, and uh, he doesn't get overly explicit about Christianity because he recognizes the sadness of uh, how politically corrupted that has been, uh, and, and rightly so. I mean, a lot of people hear Christianity and they think it's just, you know, they want you to deny, they want to deny you your joy in this earth, and that's not at all what Christianity should be, but I get it. And so, But he talks about Jesus, he does. He just doesn't explicitly go into... Uh, he just talks about the beauty and just how we're striving for it. We just don't get it. We can't get it. And uh, he talks about walking um, along this uh, hilltop in Ireland. And it just is great. I, you know, the, the, the sense of loss he has when he sees his dad pushing his two daughters on a swing set, but knowing full well that, you know, that dad will be at his stage at some point too, just a sense of loss. And then thinking back, like I think back of my kids, when I was pushing them on a swing set, all the concern I had, like, am I going to have enough money to pay the mortgage? I mean, it's just, it never stops. It never stops. And, uh, and I, just, I just think back to my man, Nathan. I hope he had a chance to, to enjoy his wife. I mean, I just, like, I hope. And he has got nine kids. I, my, my, uh, I think he's got a Greek last name, so I'm sure he's somewhat of a, a Christian, Orthodox, Catholic, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, you know, Greek... Or we got orthodoxy, Christianity for sure. So uh, my presumption with nine kids with a Greek last name, um, you know, he's probably a believer. So I imagine he had a good life with his wife uh, to, to enjoy it to the, the utmost for sure. I, I, it's hard to imagine he sacrificed everything uh, for his labor uh, and didn't enjoy the, the comforts of his, of his wife and his children. You don't get that with that many kids. But with that said, I mean, I think back to my wife's mom. Um, you know, her dad died, or not my wife's mom. My wife's mom's husband, i.e. my wife's dad, you know, she he died when she was young, too. And uh, and, and she was left with nine children to raise. And, um, and I, you know, they, I don't know. I, I just, I know that he never went to Ireland like he always wanted to go. And, uh, and I just, I just hope we don't put off till tomorrow what you could do today. Uh, because that might never come. And all the, like Nathan said, all the best laid plans. Hey, all the best laid plans are really um, not in this world. The, the, the peace, the fulfillment we're shooting for is in the next world. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the, the, the time of beauty that you see. I mean, just the, the beauty of a, of a foliage in the fall, of just the ocean, the breeze of the ocean with the waves bashing into the sand, um, just like you know, the clouds, uh, just a, oh man, a bumblebee on a sunflower, you know, a dog sitting on your lap. There's so many things to just enjoy. The happiness of a child opening a Christmas present, just, oh, don't put that stuff off for a future that might not come. Just uh, do it now. And remember, what makes you happy? Is it another 5,000 square foot home? I don't think so. And if it's not, if that's what you're striving for, why? Well, if that doesn't bring you happiness, what brings you happiness is literally the simple things in life. Then maybe go back to being simple. You know, maybe that's what we need to do. Just go back to being simple. I don't know what that means for you. Um, but for me, it's just, you know, it's waking up, sunset over the ocean, a cup of coffee, dog, knowing my kids are okay, knowing I got no debt. Man, that's a good place to be. All right. So for you who have lost a loved one earlier than you anticipated, man, I got nothing but feelings for you. I got nothing, nothing but feelings for you. I just hope you were able to enjoy the time you had with each other. I hope you were. And for you, those who are out there you know, struggling, digging another ditch, digging another ditch, thinking one more ditch, it's like Randy Marsh when he uh, was playing the, the South Park game where the – he's chasing the dragon. I guess that's what they say for heroin addicts. They chase the dragon. They're always chasing the dragon. They never catch it, though. 
I, I hope that's not you because you'll never catch that dragon. The dragon's got to come from within and uh, you got to find it within. And, and just remember, a lot of times the simple things will make you the happiest. And I will see you.